The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The woman who fears the Lord will herself be praised. Her children have called her most blessed. Her husband has sung her praises. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. This word of the Lord came to me. Go, cry out this message for Jerusalem to hear. I remember the devotion of your youth, how you loved me as a bride, following me in the desert, in a land unsown. Sacred to the Lord was Israel, the first fruits of his harvest. Should any presume to partake of them, evil would, bef would befall them, says the Lord. When I brought you into the garden land to eat its goodly fruits, you entered and defiled my land. You made my heritage loathsome. The priests asked not, where is the Lord? Those who dealt with the law knew me not. The shepherds rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after useless idols. Be amazed at this, O heavens, and shudder with sheer horror, says the Lord. Two evils have my people done. They have forsaken me, the source of living waters. They have dug for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that hold no water. The word of the Lord. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. O Lord, your mercy reaches to heaven, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your justice is like the mountains of God, your judgments like the mighty deep. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. How precious is your mercy, O God! The children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They have their fill of the prime gifts of your house. From your delightful stream you give them to drink. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. 
Keep up your mercy toward your friends, your just defense of the upright of heart. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak to the crowd in parables? He said to them in reply, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, you shall indeed hear but shall not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and many of the righteous longed to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. We live at a time, at a juncture, that's particularly sensitive to inequality, to seeing an inequality of outcome, the various disparities that exist in our culture, indeed in every culture, and it's basically the common ground, at least on some level, that these inequalities should be addressed and even leveled. But Christ says something unpopular for us to hear today when he says that to anyone who has, more will be given, and from he who has not, even what he has, will be taken away. And this doesn't refer primarily to material goods. It refers to the ability we might have to understand. Why does Christ speak in parables? Because the mysteries of the kingdom do not admit of plain language. That doesn't mean that Christ doesn't speak openly. He says at his own defense the night before he died that he spoke openly everywhere before the Jews. But to be fair, heaven and the experience of the kingdom of heaven is something so beyond our experience that it can only be conveyed with images, principally with the very image of the Father himself, Jesus Christ who images in his bearing, in his words, what it means to live and to walk with the Father. And so to he who has the ears to hear, more will be given, because he has more to hear. And he who has the eyes to see, can see in the God-man who stands in front of him what is at stake. But the one who, for whatever reason, does not recognize what is on offer, there's only ground to go astray. God is not an elitist in the sense that he wills the salvation of some and not others. He wills that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But he also permits discrepancies. He permits diversity of a different sort, diversity of outcome. And this doesn't mean that we sit on the sidelines in the face of those who have not heard the gospel, who have not recognized one teaching or understanding or another, or who labor in poverty or alienation, and we sit on the sidelines and conclude that it's the will of God. God permits various things that he does not properly intend and invites us to step into the situation following him to remedy it. But he also warns that there are some gaps that we cannot pass or surmount on our own power. And so some will indeed hear but not understand. Some will indeed look but not see because they will not be able to understand with their hearts. Some of whom through no fault of their own, some of whom quite likely through fault of their own. 
And if you ask me to detail it further, I can't. I'm in sales, not management. And so are you. You're in sales as well. But we invite all, in our bearing, in our knowledge, in our union with Christ at this august sacrifice, where we walk with him to the most full and proper dimension of his sacrificial love. We walk and arrive with him here at the fullest dimension of his life where he dies once for all for sin and lives and reigns forever that we might live for God. That whole experience contained here in the Mass, represented, not re-sacrificed, but represented as the unbloody sacrifice. And we who cannot help but be marked by this carry it into the world and by extension mark those who might not even know the name of the Lord or recognize him for who he is. We carry that reality into the world and touch the lives of those unable to hear with their ears, to see with their eyes, to understand with their hearts. And it's in our Christian lives and in the action of grace welling up from within our hearts that they are invited to the fullness of life. So is God an elitist? No, he intends all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But if you have an ideology that does not understand why God loves the Virgin Mary more than you, or doesn't understand how having some more excellent than you is no diminution of your identity or dignity, but rather is an invitation in your proper reverence to come to the full stature of your being, the full stature of Christ, then that ideology is one that is blinding in itself. An egalitarianism of opportunity, of openness, of God's universal will for all people? Yes, that is the heart of the gospel. St. Paul says as much. But an egalitarianism that tries to say that we have nothing to learn from each other, nothing to learn from the angels, nothing to learn from the prophets, nothing to learn or reverence from the mother of God, that it would be offensive to imply that some might happen to be better than others? Well, woe, woe to us. For there is a measure by which we will be ranked, a measure by which we will even judge the angels, namely our charity. And that is nothing that we ought boast of because it does not come to us from our own power. It itself is a gift of God, commensurate with our experience and life. And the most charitable are also the most ready to welcome those more charitable than themselves. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate Blessed Virgin, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, 
it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right being as you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, of your sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith, save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the innovation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, and that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our Holy Father, St. Dominic, with St. Bridget of Sweden, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Please to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind of admittance to your kingdom. Hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we do to our trespasses, and lead us not into the kingdom, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who travels in search of fine pearls, and who, on finding one of great price, sold everything to buy it. Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, Almighty God, on this feast day of Blessed Virgin of Sweden, that we may be ever fervent with holy desires and abound in good works through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just the standard request that anyone who is able-bodied and has the time and is not at risk, if you might be able to stay behind and help us clean the church for our state and archdiocesan requirements, it would be deeply appreciated. Unfortunately, we have to close the church soon after that on account of the security concerns that we've had as of late. And continued thanks for the volunteers, such as the ushers and others, who make it possible for us to offer Mass publicly in this way. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, your angel, defend us in that. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God bless you. Novena prayer to Saint Anne. Glorious Saint Anne, filled with compassion for those who invoke thee, with love for those who suffer, heavily laden with the weight of my troubles, I cast myself at thy feet and humbly beg of thee to take the present affair which I recommend to thee under thy special protection. Vouchsafe to recommend it to thy daughter, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and lay it before the throne of Jesus, so that he may bring it to a happy issue. Cease not to intercede for me until my request is heard. Above all, obtain for me the grace of one day beholding my God face to face, and with thee and Mary and all the saints, praising and blessing him for all eternity. Amen. Saint Anne, Mother of Mary. Saint Anne, Grandmother of Christ. Saint Anne, Spouse of Saint Joachim. Saint Anne, support of the Christian family. Amen. Good Saint Anne. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Amen.